Hi guys, it's me again. Ha, what do you expect? Today we will build login and the rest API. We will do some authentication, some JVT token, we will make everything completed and send to the user again. We will do an API calls. We will add a, a router and we'll be handling uh, requests from users. So it's the next episode of the previous episode. In the previous episode, we are building like migrations and starting the project. Now we will add more puzzles and you will have more stuff to do. It's next episode, so it's more. And uh, remember, because my friend Anna is creating Angular course. This Angular course, it's something like addition to my Golang course. You will be able to add frontend to my backend and you will have complete app. Let's start. The first thing that we need to do, it will be to refactor a bit interfaces. We need to move them and we'll use them in this place. We will name the packages interfaces. Here we will just retype all interfaces that we have. I have auto import, you have not for bubbly, so you need to retype the package that we will need here. Okay, now we will retype the account interface. We need to create two more interfaces and there will be like structs that we will return to the user. We don't want to return all what we have in database and we prefer to have it controlled by this way. It will be response account and the response user. Next, we need to delete them from file migrations go and change a bit what we have here because we were using interfaces from this file. So it will be few places where we need to do that. That interfaces means we call for the interfaces package. like the last place where we need to do it in migrations go now we will move connect db inside the helpers as well because we will use it in more places we need to import all of the stuff we need a postgres as well it's like just driver for postgres so it's better if it will be in helpers here we will set up like the default password, database and uh, user. Remember to never use default ones, always change for your own, but never push it to the repo. I will show you in the next episodes how we can use dot and file. Here we need to import the ConnectDB from helpers. Now we will create a package users where we will have everything related to users for now until it will be bigger. Next we'll create smaller chunks for that. Inside the users we will need some imports. I just copy paste, you can retype them or copy from our repository as well. In the user, the main function that we'll use now, it will be login, we'll create just one function without going so much into smaller one, it's not that big. This map staring with interface, it means like we can return a mapped uh, a response with any type. For now it's okay because we'll have a few types of the response. Now we will do connection into the database. Let's take a look how I do it. Oh, 
thought it was like typo it should be capitalized if we would like to export it now it works Here we will ask database for the user with the, this username. First mean like we need the first row with something like find only one element without sending it like uh, array. And here we used uh, a record not found. It means if we have not a record, this uh, if will pass and we will get the staring sort we have not user. Now we will verify password. I will show you how we can do it by compare passwords with hash. We will use bcrypt for that. Let's take a look. And remember to always use uh, string uh, made converted to the byte. If our error will be like mismatch password and it will be not null, we will have the message from, uh, from the response, so it's a wrong password. So now we need to look for the accounts. If everything is fine with our user, we need to start looking for our bank accounts that we will assign to the user and a return in the response after login. And here we will use a bit different methods that we used for with, when looking for a user because we need to take only few fields. We don't need all of them. That's why we used a response account. And we will use scan method that will pass all the variables inside the accounts. Next one thing, uh, it will be setting up the uh, response of the user. We will like create the user struct and specify how we would like to make it, like which format. Now we can close connection with database. Okay, it's time for signing JVT token. It's kind of important with uh, login logic. So here we will specify what should be included in the token. Here will be just simple user ID and uh, expire time. We will set up it for 60 minutes, I think Anyway, it's very long for the banking application. Later, maybe we'll think about change it. The situation is the action when we already signed the token. to of course check the errors about the token if they are not and we need to return just a string from the token Now we will create simple response for the login function where we will have all of the like user data, message status and uh, JVD token.
Okay, we are almost fine with that. It was returned it, it, it's fine. Now we can go into API logic. Let's create new file folder like APA. Inside we need to create api.go and create some API package. Let's take a look how I've done it. I copy pasted some imports, you don't need to write it, you can copy paste from the repository as well. Now we will need to create some Starac only for APA like interfaces. Let's take a look, we will need some for a login and some for error response. It will be just simple for line, three lines of code. Next we can go into the login function that will handle our API and next we'll handle all of the login logic. It will call our package and uh, we'll handle, handle the request, handle the response. First we need to create like body we need to check what is inside the body we will use for your CEO util we will need to like reformat it let's take a look okay so it looks fine for now we have it formatted now we can go into the proper login logic. We'll pass the formatted password, formatted username and we'll get a response. Here we can check if our message is the proper one, all is fine, if yes, we can return the user, if it's not, we need to return some communicate for the user, something went wrong. Here we will handle error and just send the message. Now we need to create proper API handler when we will use like Gorilla MOOCs for the router and we will handle the first endpoints. Let's take a look how it will be done. Here we can specify it will accept only post method. We will set up it as 4.8 and here we will set up like HTTP listener. It looks fine. Now we need to do one more thing, the last one before testing. Let's take a look. We need to go into the main and uh, start API. And of course, comment migrations, we don't need them anymore if you did them in the first lesson. Oh, here we have some problems with helpers. Ah, uh, I forgot to change it here. So, let's test it now wrong username it's fine we have the response
but we can see we have empty accounts. It was error here with the account, it should be accounts. Let's test it again. Looks fine. Let's take a look for the call. Everything works. Let's take Martin. Everything looks fine. Congratulations, you've made it. Congratulations! You built that login form and first REST API. You are not probably ready to do something with your backend app yet, but if you will follow our videos, you will be. You will get more knowledge and more code and everything will be cool. And remember to give us thumb ups and subscribe our channel and comment what features would you like to know and what would you like to learn, maybe some new language or new features from the, our tutorials. We will do it for you. See you in the next videos. Bye!